So, if you ever wanted to shoot a whole project on anamorphic lenses, uh, then thanks to Siri's latest release, uh, and it happens to be the 24mm f2.8, you're finally going to be able to cover all the most important focal lengths. We don't want to grow up. This lens is the third lens in the lineup of already really great anamorphic lenses uh, that Siri previously released. The first focal length that they released was the 50mm f1.8. Then after that they released the 35mm f1.8. And now this lens, the 24mm, I think completes a nice set of, again, affordable, also small and really practical to use anamorphic lenses. Recently I shot a short film using the set of these three anamorphic lenses and even though we were filming indoors in pretty tight locations, uh, the three focal lengths were more than enough to be able to get all the angles that I needed. In my upcoming video I'll show you guys this short film along with the behind the scenes and a comparison of the three lenses. But let's get back to the 24mm lens. So this lens is a 1.33 times anamorphic squeeze aspect ratio. Uh, lens, which means that if you're shooting on a standard 16x9 uh, image sensor camera uh, and you're shooting with this lens, then afterwards in post-production when you de-squeeze that image, you're going to end up with that 2.4 to 1 uh, widescreen aspect ratio. So this is kind of a nice cinema scope. Now, considering that this is a 24mm anamorphic lens uh, with, again, a 1.33 horizontal uh, aspect ratio squeeze, what that essentially means is that if you were to compare this to a spherical lens, it kind of gives you an equal field of view to like an 18mm lens. So if you're wondering just how wide it is, uh, again, throw in an 18mm lens onto any of your cameras uh, and kind of you can compare and you'll, you'll get that same uh, field of view. Of course, this lens comes with different lens mounts for different mirrorless cameras. So your crap factor is really going to be dependent on the, the kind of camera that you're going to pair this with. When you're getting this lens, uh, you'll be able to choose from one of the five different lens mounts, which is for either Sony E-mount, uh, Canon EF M-mount, uh, Nikon Z-mount, or for example, you can get the Fujifilm X-mount. Also, uh, the one that I have up here is the Micro Four Thirds mount, which is again going to be available for your Blackmagic cameras, Z cameras, or Olympus cameras. Uh, this lens has a max aperture of f2.8 and a minimum of f16. Uh, and it's a smooth rotating aperture ring, which makes this a perfect lens for video work. Uh, the focus ring is also nice and smooth, and it gives you uh, a really good 190 degrees of basically rotation, which means that, uh, that if you want to be able to uh, dial in and get a perfect focus on your subject, uh, then again, you'll be able to do that because it gives you a lot of space. Now, if you want to be able to shift the focus really fast, you probably don't want to be doing it by hand. You will want to pair this with like a wireless follow focus system. Now, just keep in mind when you're focusing this lens, uh, the limitation of it is that the closest you can focus to is around two feet, which is, I guess, around this distance from here. So two feet or 0.6 uh, meters. Now, if you want to be able to get in closer to your subject and be able to still focus, you can do that by attaching the different lens diopters to this lens. Uh, and it, the workflow with that is very similar pretty much with most other anamorphic lenses on the market, even the really, really expensive uh, anamorphic lenses. Now, comparing this lens to most other anamorphic lenses, uh, there's actually three things that I think really makes this lens, just like the other two previous lenses from Siri, uh, stand out. And those three things are absolutely the first one is the price. You're just not going to be able to find another reliable anamorphic lens uh, for a lower price. The next thing is the image quality that you're going to get with this lens. It gives you those typical anamorphic characteristics, gives you that oval bokeh. Even though I noticed that compared to the other two lenses from Siri, uh, the 24mm, it, the bokeh is not as oval as it is with their other two lenses, but it's still there. Uh, it also gives you that beautiful horizontal blue 
lens flare uh, that is usually associated with an uh, anamorphic lens look. Uh, and the last thing is that these lenses, again, even though they're actual anamorphic lenses, they're very small. Now, this lens uh, is actually a slightly bigger than the 35 millimeter, which was even, again, a little bit bigger than their uh, 50 millimeter lens. And that's because each of these lenses are actually designed from scratch and built uh, differently. So this one actually has uh, 13 elements and 10 groups. It's built out of solid aluminum, beautifully, you know, built, very solid uh, and durable lens. Again, like I said, very smooth turning focus and, and aperture rings. It's just a really beautiful lens. And again, gives you those, you know, the nice image quality, gives you a nice sharp image, gives you those anamorphic uh, characteristics, yet it does it all in a really, really small compact size. Now these lenses are designed to cover an APS-C size image sensor, uh, but you can use them actually with full frame cameras. Uh, actually, Brendan Lee, uh, I've seen him testing out this lens uh, with the Sony A7S III, and he told me that he uses the clear image zoom function on the Sony cameras, uh, and he just basically zooms in until the image fills the whole uh, width of the frame. I've used this lens mainly with my pocket Blackmagic uh, 4K cinema camera, and I think it's, it's a, it makes a really great combo. At the end of the day, I think whatever camera it is that you like shooting with, whatever mirrorless camera, uh, again, you'll be able to pair this with and, and uh, go and get beautiful shots. Another thing that I really love about this lens, which is, again, identical to the other two lenses from Siri, is just how the glass elements react uh, when they interact with the different light that might be hitting the lens at different angles. And if you get the light uh, just at the right angle, you're gonna get these beautiful blooming kind of effects and, and, and flares uh, that I think look very organic. Yet at the same time, like I said, the lens is actually very sharp. Even when I've been shooting with this lens wide open, uh, I think it is the sharpest anamorphic lens I've ever shot with. Personally, I am happy that finally I have a nice complete set of affordable and compact anamorphic lenses that I can finally use on a paid project where I might need to have uh, access to different focal lengths. Uh, I think the 24 combined with the previous 35 and the 50 millimeter lenses really gives you that, that you know, most used focal lengths that you're gonna need. Now, of course, if Siri is listening, uh, if you guys are considering maybe working on another lens, I, personally, I think for me, more important would be to get an even longer focal length, maybe like an 85 uh, millimeter. Anyways, these are my thoughts on Siri's latest release, uh, which is our 24 millimeter lens. And I think if you're a filmmaker who's maybe a little bit curious, maybe you, you want to give anamorphic uh, lenses a try, uh, then I think there hasn't been a, a better time than right now to get into it because again, it's so uh, readily available and affordable. Uh, so especially when you consider that you can get this lens now and the other two lenses and get a nice complete set. So for all the information about where you can get this lens and the other lenses, as always, check out my website at tomantosfilms.com or just follow the links in the description of this video. My name is Tom Antos and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.